Okay, so let's take a look at how you can create a SQL instance and then use that instance to connect to dbweaver data admin tool. So what we're going to do is log into Microsoft Azure portal. Next, we will be checking out all services. Click on databases and then we will check Azure SQL. You'll find that I already have created one instance called SQL DB and it is SQL Server along with this database underneath with service tier of 5 DTUs. So I have this setup ready and I can ready to go and connect this with DBR. But the thing is I will show you the entire flow of how to get there. So start from clicking on create. Now here you have like three options. First SQL database within which you have single database option or smaller workload and for specific set of limit up to 100 TB along with your typical option of using it for serverless or your typical SQL management. Then elastic pool when your data needs scaling and better performance. Then finally database server where you have backup management, access management and elastic pools option for your server. Next thing you have manage instance and virtual machines. These two we are not dealing with right now because it would have their own set of process to follow and it would be different from what we need for this example of connecting your Azure SQL to dbweaver. Right. So what I will do is I will just select SQL databases, right? Then click create, which will open up another process flow where you have to give all the details for configuration. Then first thing is choosing subscription, right? Then resource group, then your database details, right? And you pick the server or you create new right where you also get to create your location as well right then there is elastic pool option you can say no if you want to keep things simple and if you have a lot of data to migrate you can use sql elastic pool right now the next thing compute plus storage where you can configure this Let's say I will choose the most simple option which limits me to 2 GB, right? Apply that and move on. Next thing is your backup redundancy. So I will pick the local one and now my pricing would be as shown. Now move to networking. Here you can choose firewall rules, allow every service to connect to, add current IP address, choose private endpoints, then connection policy you can keep default and then move to security now here you can enable microsoft defender for sql along with your option for ledger and identity now the thing is you will also have to check how much the price will be once you enable one of these options so currently i'm not choosing anything so the price would revert to same. Now you have data source where you have existing data to choose from which is sample in your case and there is database collation to choose from right and then there is also maintenance window for you to choose but by default system selects that for you so you don't have much say in that. So next thing click tax here you can add the tax and value to organize your resources so that later you can group them under resource groups based on tax right there are multiple use cases for tax but in my case I'm just going to keep this on and then later I'm going to delete the same right now here I'm going to finally review this setup as you can see the price then also variety of configuration in your case the price may differ if you are in us it will be usd if you are in any other region that price would 
follow right now i hope you get idea up to this point now let's move on to my existing resource because i already have one setup so i'll not be setting up one more setup there now what i will do is i will pick this server name also i'll pick the username and password and then i will try to connect to dbver so let's go to my desktop where i already have dbver application so this is basically data admin tool that lets you connect with variety of data sources right like sql server postgres mysql and tons of nosql and sql databases out there now the thing that you need here is your server name along with connection string in case if you happen to connect it with jdbc string or odbc string so for odbc however you will have to deal with driver and so but in case of dbr most likely they already have sql server drivers so you don't have to redownload them and even if let's assume you may have to download then application has that option now once db were opens you will find window that looks like this here i already have some of the existing databases and to add our azure sql i will click on connect and from there i will just use other here you can see azure sql server option i will click on that and it will show you the option to add your password then you can add your username you may also need to add let's say your host so you go back here copy your server name and paste it here right now i can also take a look at ssl option right because if it requires you will have to fill that up meanwhile i can test the connection and it will download if driver is required otherwise it will just show you connection is okay right so i will click on okay and now i will finish this to establish that connection now i can select that and then expand all the databases and here you see i already have one master databases let's try and see the schemas that we have tables that we have already right if you have any other database to switch to so you can simply let's say browse from here right here only master is connected if we happen to say edit connection and let's say we choose no database and test connection let's see if it requires that so we will edit this we will reconnect again now here let's see if we choose existing database it will allow the connection or not let's try and find whether we have that database there so if we click ok and go there we can switch on now let's try and refresh this and let's see what it shows now it is loading so we have database devdb with which we can now connect right so here you see already we have few schemas listed there and here you can see internal and external tables right so if we right click on it view the table it will show the columns right and let's say if i try and view the data on that i can right click and make the query it should show me the information related to database and when it was edited and so on right along with that i can also take a look at anything else that we have indexes procedures etc you can also create a new schema right or you can view any existing schemas right so there are also tables that you can create you can get rid of this can create new table 
through typical way that we use with dpr as you can see that method is also available for me and once i create anything i can use control s and those changes will be committed here right you can create the database from your query editor within azure portal as well you just have to paste the password here click ok go there create new database you can also access from dbr as well so you have like multiple option to choose from what you choose to do and how you manipulate database and how you work with your azure sql database within dbr as an admin tool is up to you